Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to make this adorable crochet mini bee and how to add it to a keychain if you want to. You will need yellow velvet yarn that is a weight 5. Mine is by Baby Bee called Bumblebee Wings. Black velvet weight 5 yarn. Mine is by Yarn Bee called Black. White worsted weight 4 yarn. Mine is by Yarn Bee. It's called the Soft and Sleek Low Pill. And a black worsted weight 4 yarn. Mine is by Karen Simply Soft called Black. You'll also need some stitch markers. A 5 millimeter crochet hook a darning needle, tools for the keychain attachment, two 10 millimeter safety eyes, the keychain accessory, and a seven millimeter jump ring to go with it. You're also gonna need some stuffing as well. To begin, we're just going to start with a magic ring. We're going to take the yellow velvet yarn and wrap it once around our three fingers like so. Then we're going to wrap it one more time and create a little X in the back of our three fingers. Now we're going to take our hook and go under that first loop. And we're going to grab that second strand and pull it through just like this. Now we're going to twist it. And then we're going to go back to that same strand and pull up a loop through that twisted loop. And that's going to be our magic ring. And now we're going to place six single crochets into the magic ring. So we're going to go into the ring and pull up a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops on our hook. We're going to do that six times. So we're going to go in, pull up a loop, two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through both. So that's number two. We're going to go in. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's number three. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, number four. And we're just going to do that two more times to have all six on our magic ring. So here we are with all six. Now we're going to pull that tail to close up our magic ring. We do want to leave just a little tiny space. You don't want to pull it completely tight just because we are going to work into that first stitch. And if you pull it too tight, you won't be able to get it in there. So now we're going to grab our stitch marker and we're going to go into that first stitch and start round two. We're going to go into that first stitch and we're going to place one single crochet. We got two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through two, just like we've been doing. Now we're going to take our stitch marker and place it through that stitch because that's marking our second round. Now we're going to go into the same stitch and place another single crochet. So that's two stitches in the first stitch. Now we're going to go into our next one and we're going to place two single crochets as well. There's one and here is two. So we're going to go around the whole circle and just place two single crochets in each stitch. You should end up with 12 stitches at the end of this. Here we are at the end of our second round. I'm just placing the final two stitches into our last stitch here. And there's our finished second round. I'm just pulling that tail too to tighten up that magic ring. And now to begin the third round, we're going to go into that first stitch of our second round where our stitch marker is. We're going to place a single crochet and we're going to mark that with a stitch marker. And that's the beginning of our third round. 
So now we're going to go into the same stitch and place a single crochet. But into the next one, we're just going to place one single crochet. And into the next, we're going to place two single crochets. So we're going to repeat this pattern, placing one single crochet in the next, two in the next, and you should end up with 18 stitches at the end of this round. I will meet you back here when we have the end of our round. And here I am at the end of round three, just placing my last stitch. And now to start round four, we're going to go into that first one where our stitch marker is, place a single crochet, and then add a stitch marker. All right, so we're going to go into the next stitch and place a single crochet. And we're just going to place one single crochet in each of the 18 stitches for this round. You should have 18 stitches at the end of this. I will meet you back here once we have this round complete. And here I am at the end of this round. So this is going to be where the face of our B is going to be. We want to turn it inside out like this so the right side of our stitches is facing outward. We're going to just pull up a really big loop because right now we're going to add the eyes. You want to make sure that where you're working is at the bottom of the face. So now we're going to grab our two 10 millimeter safety eyes. And we are going to place these eyes in between the second and the third row. So these are the rows here that I'm pointing out, and this is the second and the third. And we're just going to place it kind of in the middle of the face, just wherever you think is appropriate, wherever you think looks good. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So these are the second and the third rows. And you want to make sure it's in line with the other eye. And once you have them on there the way you want, we're going to add little backs to them. And now we're going to grab that black worsted weight yarn in our darning needle. And we're going to add the little smile to our bee before we continue on. We're going to insert the darning needle through the back of the face, where the inside of the bee will be. And we're just going to try and work it into that first magic ring round that we made. And we're just going to place it as best as possible into the center of those two eyes and just come up through there. And you only want one strand to come through, so just hold one side and pull the rest of it all the way through. And now we're going to go into the other side to finish up that mouth. And once you go through that other side, you're going to come up with the darning needle through a stitch that's lower and in the middle of the two stitches. This is going to create the anchor for the mouth so that it's a smile rather than a straight face. So now we have this little line and to make it a smile, we're going to go through that top stitch just on the surface and go right back in to that anchor point and pull through. And that's going to pull the smile down to make it a smile instead of a straight face. And then we just tug on the end and I like to play with the smile a little bit just to make sure that this is how I want it. All 
All right, and then once everything is how you like it, you're just going to turn it around and just tie those two ends together to secure that smile on the face. We're going to continue on. We're going to put our hook back through that loop and just tighten it around our hook. And we're going to go into that first stitch of our fourth round and start our fifth round. So we're going to leave two of the yellow loops on our hook and then we're going to grab that black velvet yarn. And instead of finishing that single crochet with the yellow, we're going to add the black. So you just hook it on your hook and pull through both loops as if you were using the yellow and that's going to attach the black to our B. And now we're going to do a jogless join. So we're going to take our hook out and then we're going to insert it into that next stitch of the round. And then put that loop through our hook and just pull it through that stitch. Make sure that your working yarn is behind your hook, but we do this so that the rounds are nice and seamless instead of being jagged and visible. So we're going to take that stitch marker and just mark this first stitch of this round. And we're going to continue doing single crochets just like we have been for the rest of this project. We're just going to keep doing one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You should have 18 single crochet stitches for this round five. All right, so here we are at the end. And now we're going to go into that first stitch. We're going to pull up a loop and we're going to leave two loops on our hook. And we're going to go back to that yellow so that we can make our yellow stripe. So we're going to grab that yellow. And we're going to yarn over and pull it through both of these loops here. And we're going to do the jogless join again. So we're going to go into the next stitch. Place our hook through that stitch. And then we're going to place the loop over the hook and pull it through that stitch. Again, I'm moving the yellow back because you want to make sure that the working yarn is behind you. And now I'm going to place the stitch marker here to mark our first stitch. And we're just going to keep going with just some single crochets all the way around. We're going to do this with the yellow and then we're going to do it one more time with the black. So at the end of this, you should have two black stripes and one yellow in the middle. So here we are at the end of the black round. We have two of our black stripes and one yellow in the middle. And here I am just finishing off this black stripe round. We're going into that first stitch and now I'm going to grab the yellow. But I am going to cut off this black strand because we are done working with the black. So we don't need more of it anymore. I'm just going to cut that. And then I'm just going to tuck that away and grab our yellow. So we're going to pull that through both of those loops. And again, do a jogless join, inserting into that next stitch, placing the loop over the hook and pulling that through. And then moving our working yarn to the back. And we're going to continue. We're going to add our stitch marker in here. I add
had it as stitch just so that I could get my hook out of the way. And then I'm going to place my stitch marker in that first stitch to mark the round. And then we're going to go around with another round of just one single crochet into each stitch. But before we do that, I am going to tie both of those black strands together from when we added our black yarn to when we ended. And I'm just going to tie them together so that they don't have any chance of coming loose at any point in time and just kind of secure them in there a little bit better. And then I'm just going to stuff them in that B. And then we are going to continue on. And again, we're just going to work single crochets into each stitch. Again, ending with 18 single crochets, just like we've been doing. And here I am at the end of the round, finishing my last stitch. And instead of doing a jogless join, I'm just going to complete that single crochet because we're not working with another color anymore. I'm going to take that stitch marker out from the last round and I'm going to add it for this round for our first single crochet there. So for this round, we're going to do one single crochet and one decrease. We already have our one single crochet, so we're going to do the decrease. We're going to go into that stitch, pull up a loop, and into the next one, and pull up a loop. We should have three loops on our hook, so we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. That's going to be our decrease. The next one, we're just going to do a regular single crochet. And then we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to go into that first stitch and then we're going to go into the next stitch. We have three loops, yarn over and pull through three. The next one will just be a regular single crochet. And then we're going to do a decrease again. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around. You should have 12 stitches after this. Here I am at the end. And there is our B so far. Now we're going to put the crocheting on pause and we're going to stuff our B before it gets too small where we can't stuff it. So we're grabbing our stuffing and then we're going to put that inside of the B. Just make sure he's nice and full, and then we're going to continue on. So for this next round, I'm going to take out my stitch marker so it's easier to work into. And we're going to just do decreases all the way around. So we're going to go into that first stitch, pull up a loop. Then we're going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. We have three loops, so we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So this is our first stitch of the round, but we're going to keep doing that all the way around. We're just going to do decreases the whole time, and you should end up with six stitches for this row. Here I am at the end of the row. I'm going into this last stitch and I'm doing a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull a loop through and instead of yarning over, I'm just going to pull that loop through the loop that's on my hook. And that is a slip stitch. And that's how I'm finishing off this round so that I can leave a long tail and cut that yarn off. And we're just going to pull that through the loop and pull to tighten. Now we can take our stitch marker out because we don't need that anymore and we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to grab that tail and sew through the front loop of every stitch. So this should be six stitches and we're just going to grab that front loop 
and we're going to sew that strand through each of the six stitches. And then once we reach the end, we're going to pull on that tail and that's going to close that little hole that we had left. Now I'm just going to hide this tail, kind of sew in and out with it a few times just to keep it solid where it's at. And then once I've gone in and out a few times, I'm just going to go straight down the middle and out the other side of the B just to hide that tail. And then we're just going to cut off the excess. So here is our finished body for the bee, all nice and plump. And now what we're going to do is get started on the wings for the bee. So for this, we're going to grab that white yarn. And we're going to make another magic ring. Again, I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to wrap it around our three fingers here. And then wrap it around one more time to create an X. We're going to put our hook through that first one and pull up a loop. Twist that loop. And then grab that strand that's closest to us and pull it through that loop. And here is our little magic ring. So what we're going to do is work half double crochets into the ring. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the ring, pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook now. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And that's a half double crochet and we're going to make six of them. So we're going to yarn over, insert into the ring, pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook here, so we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Again, yarn over, insert into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Again, we're just going to make six of these. There's number five and here is number six. So now that we are all done with our six half double crochets, we're going to grab that tail and we're going to pull the ring closed completely. Don't have to worry about an extra space. And now we're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch. So we're going to go into that first stitch with our hook. We're going to pull up a loop. And then we're going to take that loop and pull it through the one that's on our hook. And that's just our slip stitch and we're going to cut a very long tail for our wing. And we're going to pull that through just to kind of seal that off. And there is one of our wings. I'm going to take my darning needle here and I'm just going to sew in that middle tail from the magic ring just to make sure it doesn't unravel or anything and I'm just going to cut off the excess but this is just how you weave that part in. You want to make sure that you don't see any of the darning needle and then just pull through and you just want to do that around the circle a few times to again add some strength and just make sure it doesn't come undone. And then once that's all nice in there, we're going to just cut off that remaining strand. And there is our first wing and we need to make two of these. So just repeat this process one more time and I'll meet you back here. Here we are with our two wings.
They both have decently long tails on them because now we are going to sew them into the back of our bee. So what we're going to do is just find the middle line of our bee in the middle of his face and go straight back. And we're going to sew them into that middle yellow stripe of our bee. We're going to grab our first wing and pull it through the darning needle. And then we're just going to go into that spot that we found that's in the middle of the bee where the yellow stripe is. And we're just going to sew that wing right in there. Sewing in the wings isn't an exact process. There's definitely many ways to do this. Just however you deem fit, however you find a place, just make sure that it's nice and solid on there. I do show you just how I get this done here because sometimes people are curious on how it's done and sometimes people don't share that. So I did want to show this is how I put the wings on and it seems to work rather well for me so here's just a little mini time lapse of me showing you how to do that just in case you were curious i do knot it at the end here like you see just to give it a little bit more strength on there and then i just hide the tail by going inside of the bee and out the other side and just cutting off the excess. And now we're just going to repeat the same process with that other wing. I'm just going to show you where I place it, just right across from that other one into a stitch and then I'm just going to sew that on the same way I did the other one. And there we have our bee with his little wings. Now we're just going to attach the keychain. The package I got for the keychains came with the jump rings to attach them, but if you don't have that already, you can just use a 7mm jump ring. And what you want to do is just put it right into that stitch in the middle of the wings as shown here. That way it balances nicely and you just want to slide the keychain on there and close it up. I went out of frame here a little bit, so I do apologize. But there we have it. There is our adorable little bee on his keychain. And as you can see with that jogless join, you really cannot tell where the rounds ended and began for the stripes. So it looks all uniform and just super adorable. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful and you loved it, definitely subscribe for more as I come out with new videos every Tuesday. If subscribing is too much, be sure to drop a like as it lets YouTube's algorithm know this is a good video and shares it with others who'd enjoy it. Be sure to check out this next video and I will catch you guys in the next one.